Hello and welcome, it's me Nathan, your friendly neighborhood support engineer. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about recovering a Grand Stream phone. Now, if in the process you work with our phones a lot, every once in a while you might come into a situation in which one of our phones does not want to boot. Well, if this ever happens to you, like it happens to us in support sometimes, there is a way of recovering these phones. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. All right, step one is a part of the process that we're gonna do. We're gonna turn our computer into a TFTP and a DHP server all in one. What this will allow us to do is lease out IP information to the phone as well as giving it DHP options in order to download a firmware bin file. That will actually help us recover the phone and we'll be good to go from there. So step one, you can go ahead to the link in the description, download this software that I'm using for this tutorial upload it to your computer, get yourself a PoE switch, and your bricked phone. Now we're gonna plug these all together without having any internet connection whatsoever. We're basically creating our own isolated network. And once you have everything plugged together, we're gonna to go ahead and dive into the software. All right, I have my computer set up. I already downloaded my TFTP and DHCP tool. Now, before we actually get into the program and getting it set up the first thing i'm going to do is go to the network adapter i'm going to be using and setting a static ip that way i can have some layer of communication when i get the program running so in order to do that i'm going to go ahead and edit my windows machine um, go to my network adapter options i'm going to click on ethernet i'm actually using a usb ethernet cable because i don't have a physical one on my computer but regardless of that i'm going to go to change adapter options and as you can see, my Ethernet 7 here, that's gonna be the one I'm actually gonna be editing and creating my static IP on. So I'm gonna to go to the IPv4 options, click on properties, then I'm gonna use the following IP address. So I'm gonna go ahead and put 192.168.99.20 for my subnet mask. I'm gonna go ahead and use a class C and it's not important for us to use a gateway since we will not actually be using this for a network. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay on that one. Close that, close that window. All right, now we're good to go. So I had already downloaded this software. It downloads really easy. There's really no crazy steps that you have to go through. Uh, I would note that if you do have any other DHCP uh, or TFTP programs that are already running on your PC, I would recommend not using those and just replacing it for this tool here. Because if you do have those running side by side, you're gonna get some interoperability between programs that serve the same function. Now, one of the first things I'm going to do is prepare the my TFTP server folder. I'm gonna click on settings. As you can see, I really don't have anything specified for our base directory, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Now, this base directory is where uh, endpoints are going to be pulling those files from, so it's important that we set this up. Now, I'm going to put this in my root directory, which I already have a folder named TFTP in there. There it is, TFTP root. I'm going to click OK on that one. And that's also where we're going to be putting my firmware file. Next, I'm going to go ahead and set up the DHP server here. We can go ahead and notate the start IP address, 192.168.99. Dot one. I'm going to set the size of pool to 254. Next, I'm going to go ahead and click on bind DHCP to this address, and I'm going to go ahead and select the, the interface with the static address that we had just set up, the 99.20. Click OK. After that, we also have to set up our, our router option. I'm just going to go ahead and make that my computer, and then I'm going to go ahead and set up my mask. Click OK. All right, now we're good to go. Now the only other thing that we're gonna have to do is download the firmware file and upload it to our TFTP root directory. Now the next step is to download the firmware and then upload it to that TFTP directory, which I have already done. Now because my phone's already been plugged into that switch, I also have other devices also plugged into it as well. So if we click on the DHP server, as you can see, I already have a couple MAC addresses in here of devices that I've already connected, which is pretty cool. And we can verify that our phone is connected through here. We also have this handy little log viewer as well, which we can look at kind of what's going on here. Um, but now here's for the next step, and this is the important one. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my phone. After it's unplugged, I'm gonna hold 
all the line keys to the left of the LCD screen while I'm plugging it back in. This should force the phone to reboot, release DHP options, and get our option 66. Then the phone should be able to recover from that firmware file. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. The first thing you should see on the phone after you hold the keys and then plug in the power is you will wait until you see firmware update initializing. And as soon as you see that, you you know the phone is now in the recovery process. So let's take a look at our logs here. There we go, we can see the files are now being transferred. This is good, this is what we wanna see. And even now that I'm looking at my phone, I can see it downloading the firmware. So this is pretty exciting. Now, after you see on screen validating firmware, which should happen next, and it will take a little while, so you'll have to be patient, but you should see updating firmware. And after it updates to firmware, it's gonna go ahead and then reload that firmware. One last thing that you can do is go ahead and just check for the firmware is up to date and uploaded. And keep in mind, sometimes the phone will want to do an initial reboot for the recovery process, and then it will uh, update the firmware again. If it does that, don't worry, just let it take its process and be patient. With that being said, thanks for sticking around with another Grandstream tutorial. As always, please subscribe to our channel, give it a like, and click that notification bell to receive updates from our channel. With that being said, my name's Nathan, and as always, you have a good one.